Olens has been working on a new fork that I am beyond excited about riding. In the past, I've been riding the RXF 34, which is a 34 millimeter stanchion tube fork. It's got 120 millimeters of travel. It's a trail bike fork that I've been using on my downcountry bike, a transition spur. I absolutely love the ride qualities of this fork. I've done a review on it. I'll link it below in case you want to watch it. This fork was a bit heavy for cross country use, which brings us to the new RXC 34. This is a cross country fork with a carbon steer tube, a carbon crown, and it has the same ride qualities of the RXF. What I'm gonna do in this video is we're gonna jump over to Jake Thompson from Olin's who's gonna tell us all about the fork. Before I do so, we're gonna get a weight of the RXF and the RXC. So the RXF with the axle and the crown race installed and the steer tube cut comes in at 3.79 pounds. The RXC with the front axle but with an uncut steer tube comes in at 3.35. So we're gonna be about half a pound lighter with the RXC. Now let's jump over to the call with Jake from Olin's. All right, so I'm with Jake Thompson from Olin's and Jake is located in Hendersonville, North Carolina, one of my favorite areas to ride. Uh, so I figured it'd be really cool, Jake, to get you on the call to talk about this new fork because I'm super stoked, and I know you guys are super stoked on this fork. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for the opportunity. So we've been working on this fork for quite some time, uh, about five years in development. And it's interesting because it's based on a 34 millimeter chassis. So that means that the stanchion tubes are 34 millimeters in diameter. The first fork we actually introduced was the RXF 34 that came stock on specialized stump jumper models. And unfortunately that happened to coincide when the boost uh, standard came out and we had to get on board with the 36, 38. And so we kind of kept the 34 mil chassis um, in the development works. And now that XC bikes have become uh, more capable, geometry has gotten more aggressive. The terrain itself has gotten more aggressive. Um, it's allowed us to kind of build on everything we learned with that first fork and allowed us to kind of do hyper-specific internals for uh, XC racing. So we started with a significantly firmer chassis than what was available years ago. Um, Fox and RockShox are both on the 32 millimeter stanchion train for, for lighter weight. But as we talked about, the, the more aggressive riding, it just didn't cut it. Um, you get a lot more bushing binding, um, bushing failures, and you just don't get the support you need. And I think now that riders have been on uh, more progressive bikes, they're beginning to appreciate performance, you know, forks that actually move and steer and damping that does what it should. And so that builds on that kind of trend. And we have dramatically cut weight out of our system because previously we're known for the heavier hitting DH forks where we've had the TTX 18 cartridge in the DH fork that's kind of worked its way down into smaller and smaller chassis. And this gave us an opportunity to show our race pedigree and to cut everything down to as slim as possible. And for the RXC, we actually created a all new CSU. It's a one piece carbon CSU to get that weight down to be competitive. And then we created a separate damper. It's called the OTX 14. Um, it had, and then its own air system as well um, for, you know, very specifically for weight and that for the, the carbon steer, the 100 millimeter travel version, it's specific. Like we have a, a separate CSU that has the stanchions optimized for 100 millimeter travel to get that extra 30, 40 grams, which is a big, big cost to have like a separate CSU for that. And in layman's so, terms, what is a CSU? Oh, sorry. Uh, that is a crown steer unit. So that is where the steer tube comes down, flares out, and where the two stanchion tubes are pressed or glued or bonded or whatever your method is. Um, yeah, it's that single piece. Sorry if I get off the rails with uh, <laughs> anything too technical. But uh, yeah, so the the fork itself, you know, it's optimized for weight, but being who we are, we optimize kind of wheel control and support. So for the nastier terrain, this fork just, it has tons of support. That's kind of the, the main thing we're known for and what this delivers in. One of the things I notice about the RXF is it gives the bike that hover, hover bike feeling. Mm -hmm. where you're just kind of floating above the terrain, tons of support. And then when you hit a bump, it just absorbs it. And I would imagine with the new fork, the new cross-country fork, kind of the same engineering philosophy. 
Yeah, it's it's built literally on the same chassis. So the lowers that you've been running on your spur are the same that's in the RXC, just that different CSU and then that damper. It's just the damper that's in your fork, the OTX 18. Uh, we just kind of pared it down, smaller piston, smaller oil volume, and a really cool damper system that we'll get into in a minute. Um, the, that's the OTX 14. So it'll feel very, very familiar. Um, and the air spring, same concept. It should be very familiar for anyone that's been running like a Fox 34 or a, a SID. It uses standard volume spacers. But something that's unique to us is we have also made the negative air spring volume adjustable. It's not externally adjustable, but a service center can take it out, pull this negative spacer out and put it back in. So what that means for you as the rider is most forks are kind of fixed. The, the negative air spring volume is what it is. Uh, with ours, the larger the negative air volume, that's that's how supple it is off the top. So when you're pushing on a bike, um, you can, if, if you have a large negative spring, it'll feel great off the top, but you quickly lose support because the fork will start to dive as soon as you actually begin on the trail. So there's always that balance of like what good what feels good in the parking lot and then what actually feels good on the trail. And that's going to vary depending on your terrain, your ride style, your weight, et cetera. So this extra adjustment is, is a big deal. So if you, if the fork feels harsh off the top, you can have, you can remove the negative volume spacer, increase the volume. It'll feel that much more supple and vice versa. If you're a heavy, heavier rider, riding nastier stuff, and you want a little more air, uh, support from your air spring, you can add another negative volume spacer and get that more support, which is a super cool feature all in a, in a lighter air spring model as well. So this is a force graph of uh, our damper settings. So like I was saying before, we have three ride modes that will feel familiar to anyone that's ridden an XC fork in the last 10 years. And something we've done quite a bit different is um, turn the different ride modes on their head. So typically, um, as you as you push the damping lever um, you know, to more force, it, uh, it's usually open or climb, trail, descend. So what we've done is in our open setting, what most people use in their descend mode, uh, we actually have given a very progressive damping curve. So if you look on the screen, that's what that blue line is. So you see that on the left side of the, of the screen, that is shaft speed. So that's for like the slower hits, like as you're, as you're riding and you're hitting smaller bumps, this lower damping force allows the wheel to track so that it's super comfortable, you don't lose any grip, but as you can see, at the, the higher the shaft speeds go, as in the, the larger hits you, uh, you take, the damping force increases dramatically. And this is to give you the support. Or another way to say it is the harder you push the bike, the harder you push the fork, the more support you get. And on our competitors' products, the opposite is true. In the open mode, it doesn't have any damping. And so you're just relying on the spring. So you end up with a fork that collapses right when you need it the most. There's no support. And you just end up kind of riding an endo over the nastiest terrain, um, which is not ideal. So after spending a lot of time with our athletes and testing, uh, we, we settled on this main setting for descending. And it's been, it's been really well received. Um, the middle setting is, that is the orange line you'll see. And all the way over on the left, on the slower shaft speeds, you'll see it has a, it's a little bit higher. Uh, that's where that's called the knee, and that knee is a little bit firmer so that it keeps your front wheel from falling into holes. So let's say when you you flip your level to your, your lever to your middle position, and you're pedaling on something that's uh, like a nastier fire road or a semi-technical single track, where it's not so technical that you need to stand up out of the saddle, but you're sitting down. Um, your one, you have a weight transfer rearward. So the weight on your fork is lessened. Um, but, and you don't want the wheel to kind of fall into the holes. You want to maintain that momentum you're working so hard to maintain. So this mode is a great all arounder. Um, it's got enough damping and uh, enough support so that you're maintaining momentum, but it almost works like a blow off where if you hit some of the, if you're sitting back and you hit like a larger stone or hit it, uh, hit a hole. The, the damping force allows it to kind of blow off so you don't get any harshness coming through your hands and it doesn't unsettle your, your bike handling. So you can just sit down and pedal and just uh, crunch through all the nastiest terrain. Um, and then the third mode, the purple curve you see, um, that's a standard lockout. 
uh, very, very firm damping force so that if you're on the road or you're on the final sprint to the finish line, uh, you can flip it on. You can either do it on the fly or we also have a remote uh, setting that integrates with um, DT Swiss or uh, Scott Squidlock. And we also have our own, but you can flip that on, on the fly It'll lock your fork out. And that way you're getting all the efficiency and every pedal, every pedal stroke is going to drive you forward without the fork sucking your energy. And that, that one's pretty standard, but the, it's the open and the pedal position that really sets us apart. Um, we've had a lot of good feedback from not only our riders, but the first batch of XC riders, even internally, um, we have a couple XC racers and they've been really, really excited about that middle position setting. Well, thank you for explaining this. There's, I am, I'm beyond excited to get on this fork and try it out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to hear your feedback as well. We can go off the deep end with like the technical reasons why it's like how we get those damper settings is pretty unique. Um, having to deal with the oil pathways and like what changes and X valves, but it's, it's, it's kind of unnecessary for what the rider's going to feel. I think this is a better way to go about it. And just like, what are you, the rider going to feel with this technology? And I think you're going to feel the, the same, uh, stiffness of the chassis, the directness of steering that's cooked into it, but at, you know, as much as 200 grams lighter. And then yeah. you have that damper setting that eliminates some of the fine tuning faffing about you just get to set it in those three modes. Um, you can fine tune it if you want, but like for 90% of the, the vast majority of riders out there, the stock tune works wonderful. Um, and the same thing with the air spring, it's, you know, standard set your sag, if you're bottoming out all the time, add a spacer. If you're not getting full travel, remove it. And if it, if you want to fine tune that, like you can change the the negative air spring volume as well. All right. Well, I, hey man, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for introducing this fork. I know a lot of us are really excited about it. So, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Take care. So the RXC34 is going to go on a couple projects to include the frame in the box behind me. Can you guess what it is? That project's coming up. That's my dream build. All right, that'll wrap it up for this video. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, all you gotta do is click on the little logo right there and subscribe. I got some really cool videos coming up soon, so subscribe. All right, catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.